Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying the subject, the law of spiritual authority and the jurisdiction of our authority. And we are now talking about where we do not have authority. And again, let me just remind you that there are two big problems if you do not know your jurisdiction. Problem number one, if you do not know your jurisdiction, or that is the territory where you have legal authority to rule, then you will not be using your authority in that area where you have authority to rule if you do not know your jurisdiction. And number two problem is that you will try to use your authority where you do not have jurisdiction. And we've already talked about the areas where you do have jurisdiction. And we looked at Genesis 126 and we looked at Old Testament, New Testament scriptures. And I won't go into that again. But now we are looking at where you do not have authority, what is not your jurisdiction. And we have read Genesis 1, 26 through 28. And let me remind you of that again and read it to you again. In Genesis 1, 26, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness, and let them have dominion, or let them rule. Over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that creep on the earth. And then in verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number Fill the earth and subdue it. So God said to them, fill the earth and subdue it. God said to male and female, fill the earth and subdue it. So to subdue means to put under your control, your authority, your rule. And God said the same to both male and female. So as we've seen, the female, the woman has equal authority to rule over the earth and over the fish, the birds, as it goes on, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So we see that the woman has equal authority ruling over these things. And we saw that the New Testament adds to our jurisdiction, the angels, demons, sickness, disease, all the curse of sin and death, and also fear. And these are the things that we are supposed to rule over. These are the areas of our jurisdiction. And so we see that this is the area that we are supposed to rule. However, many, probably most Christians have not ruled in those areas and have tried to rule where they do not have legal jurisdiction. What area do we not have authority? Where do we not have authority to rule? What is not named in Genesis 1, 26 and 28? What we do not see there is other people. God never said have dominion over other people. However, that is the one area where a lot of people try to rule. They try to rule over other people or exercise authority over other people. And so yesterday we have, in the last couple days, we have been going into this study and we are talking about uncovering the spirit of control. And first of all, I want to say again, there is a difference between legal authority and control. That is legal authority and control. And I say control, but you've probably been, um, you've heard the phrase, the spirit of control. And there's a difference between exercising legal authority and using the spirit of control. There is a difference between exercising legal authority and using the spirit of control. And so we began studying yesterday, what is the exercise of legal authority 
in in um, over people? What is the area where we have legal authority? God established government. So it is called government. Government is where there are positions of legal authority where certain people, some people are chosen to rule in higher positions over other people. For example, over nations, states, cities, countries, districts, I mean, counties, districts, businesses, churches, and even homes. And this is God's will that there should be government because government is established by God to bring law, order, peace, and protection. Let me say that again. Government is established by God to bring law, order, peace, and protection. And yesterday I read to you in Exodus chapter 18. Now, actually, God, first of all, established government with Adam and Eve saying that the husband is the head of the wife, making the husband head of the wife. But then there came nations and cities and there were governments established. And then in Exodus 18, we see God establishing government in Israel because when Israel was in Egypt, they were slaves in Egypt and they were under the control of Egypt. They did not have freedom. They did not have liberty. They were under the control of Egypt. But when they left Egypt, they were just a mob of people. They were just a mob of people going out in the wilderness. And so God at that time then appointed government. And in Exodus 18 verses 21 to 23, we see it says, but select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens. So appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Notice the qualifications for these officials or these rulers. They should be capable. They should be chosen from among the people. They should be men who fear God. And they should be trustworthy men and men who hate dishonest gain. And this was to bring law and order for the people. Then we saw also that law with law enforcement brings peace and protection, which results in freedom. Now, of course, law without law enforcement is the same thing as having no law. Without law enforcement It is the same thing as having no law, but law with law enforcement brings peace and protection, which results in freedom for the people. And however, where some people think law is bondage, law is not bondage. Law brings freedom because it limits sin and transgression or law breaking, which would harm the people and proper use of authority then brings peace, protection and freedom. Proper use of authority brings peace, protection and freedom. Improper use of authority, whether it is because of greed, selfishness, selfish ambition desire for status or promotion or personal benefit of any kind. This improper use of authority then brings bondage and oppression on the people and domination of the people. This is unlawful, illegal use of authority. Have 
having a governmental position of authority, whether it is in the nation, the state, city, or whether it is in the church, or even the home, does not give people the right to control other people's lives. Having a governmental position of authority in any position, national, state, local, church, or home, does not, absolutely does not, give people the right to control other people's lives. You should never, ever force someone, anyone, to do what you want them to do. Now, there is one exception to that we will talk about later. Only one exception. But in general, you never force someone to do what you want to do. However, the problem is, because of the fallen sinful nature, because of desires, because of greed, because of selfish, amb- selfish ambition or pride or even fear, people not only in high positions, but in all positions of society, high and low, people have wanted to and tried to control other people. People in trying to control other people have often become manipulative. For example, some husbands have tried to control their wives. Wives have controlled their husbands. Parents have controlled their children, their son or their daughter, trying to make them do what they want them to do. Or children have controlled their parents. Pastors have controlled church members and church members have controlled their pastor. Even dictators have controlled nations and ruled over nations forcibly, bringing the people into bondage and oppression. Let me take, for example, if a husband uses the spirit of control over his wife and children, it brings his family into bondage and oppression and under domination. If a husband tries to control his wife or children, it brings his family into bondage and oppression and under domination. But if he will rightly use his position of legal authority, it is to bring peace and protection to the family, not oppression. Did you hear that? If a husband will rightly use his position of legal authority established by God as the head of the wife and the home, then he brings his wife and children into a place of peace and protection, safety, and freedom, which is also a place of joy. However, if he misuses his position of legal authority and he abuses it, and instead uses the spirit of control, he brings his family under domination and into bondage and oppression. And there have been many people who have misunderstood legal authority and have operated in the spirit of control, thinking they were using legal authority, proper authority, but they were not. They were actually misusing and abusing that authority by using the spirit of control. I want to give an example in the church. There was a, in the, a few decades ago, a, a, a thing called shepherding. There was a doctrine, a teaching called shepherding in which it was taken to the extreme in which pastors 
actually controlled all their church members in every personal detail of their lives, told them what to buy, when, told them where to live, what to wear, what dress or suit to buy. He was misusing his spiritual authority, trying to actually control the people, dictating to the people what they should do in every area of their lives. That is an example of the abuse of that legal authority. As I also showed the example of a husband and father abusing his office of legal authority. Then we also see in the church that was a wrong doctrine. It was a wrong teaching that was going around several decades ago, 30 to 40 years ago or 50 years ago called shepherding movement in which the pastor dictated every detail of the people's lives. That was wrong teaching, wrong doctrine because it was actually using the spirit of control. And so we see the spirit of control has snuck in, in different areas, in different positions Even, as I said, wives controlling their husbands and vice versa, in which people try to manipulate and control other people. We must remember that only God can direct a person what to do with his life. Only God can... can tell a person, let me say, say it that way, can tell a person what to do with his life. You can give suggestions. You can give suggestions. You can offer assistance. But the point of drawing the line is when you put excessive pressure to make someone do what you want. When you put excessive pressure to make someone do what you want, that is illegal. And we will get into the detail on that later as actually that is called witchcraft. And that is sin. And many Christians practice this sin, this form of witchcraft by trying to make Someone else do what they want. So you can offer suggestions. You can offer assistance. But you draw the line at putting excessive pressure on another person to make them do what you want them to do. But even I said where God, only God can tell a person what to do with his life. We must also remember That even God does not force anyone to do anything, not even get saved. You see, if God was going to force anyone to do anything, he would force them to get born again. Because, of course, being born again is the most important thing that any person will ever do in their entire life because it determines their eternal future, whether they go to heaven or hell. And it is God's will that all men should be saved. But God will not even force people to get saved. Yes, he will talk to them again and again. He will draw them. He will urge. He will put in them yearnings. But he will never force. Because it comes back to what we have said from the very beginning of this teaching series. God has given to every person, a free will, a free will, a freedom to choose. God will never violate your freedom of choice. And therefore it is also sin for you to violate someone else's freedom of choice for you to violate another person's freedom of choice. God has given to every person the freedom of choice, a free will, and he will never violate 
a person's free will. He will draw, he will encourage, he will urge, he will, he will, um, inspire. He will tell you do this and don't do that, but he will never control you and forcibly make you do something. Never, ever. He has drawn the line at that point saying that every single person has a free will and the freedom to choose. And therefore, it is also sin for you to forcibly make someone else do something that you want them to do. God will not do it and you cannot do it. It is sin. And as we will get to this, it is also called witchcraft. And however, as we mentioned yesterday, there are laws and rules that have to be obeyed. And if someone chooses not to obey them, then there is a lawful or legal punishment and consequences. And, you know, naturally, if someone breaks the law, they can be forcefully arrested and put in jail or put in prison because they have broken the law. Spiritually speaking, if people break the law and don't repent, and if they do not choose Jesus as their savior, then they will be eternally condemned in hell. There is consequence. We talked about this early on in this series, in the early weeks of this teaching on the law of spiritual authority, where people say God is in control. And we answer that by saying, no, God is not in control. God does not use control over people. He has given to people freedom of choice. He is king. He is Lord. He has established laws to be obeyed. And he is the judge of all mankind. And on judgment day, everyone will be judged for what they have done. And there will be punishment and consequences for not receiving Jesus as savior. However, he still gives people freedom of choice to disobey and go their own way and not choose him. And so we see there are laws, even naturally speaking, that must be obeyed. And if a person breaks the law, there is lawful, just punishment and consequences. And so we see that we cannot control people forcibly. But if they do break the law, they can be forcefully or forcibly arrested and thrown in jail. Now I want to get into the next point here, which I just will introduce real quickly because I'm running out of time, but going back into this area of not controlling, continuing this study, I want you to see there is a difference between submission and obedience there is a difference between submission and obedience. Submission means to voluntarily and willingly yield your will to the will or desire of another person. In submission, the person submitting has a free will and free choice and voluntarily yields to another person. If they are being forced to yield, then it is no longer submission, but becomes domination. And in that area, wives are called to submit to their husbands, but husbands cannot forcibly make their wife yield to them because then it is no longer submission, but domination as submission is totally dependent on vo- being voluntary to the person doing it. Now, let me say that again. And if you have a pen or pencil, write this down. The definition of submission, submission means to voluntarily and willingly 
yield your will to the will or desire of another person. Again, submission means to voluntarily and willingly yield your will to the will or desire of another person. In submission, the person submitting has a free will and free choice. And that must always be maintained, the free will and the free choice of the person submitting. And that one then voluntarily yields their will to another person. So if they are being forced to yield, forced to obey and do certain things, then it is no longer submission, but it becomes domination. And likewise in the home, if a husband tries to force his wife to submit, then it is no longer submission, but domination. And many times husbands have even said to their wives, you're supposed to submit to me. You're supposed to submit to me. But if he tries to force her to submit, it is no longer submission, but it has become domination and domination is sin. Well, I'm out of time. Now join me again tomorrow. Remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.